I used to fish along the shore uh, and I would catch four to five bass at the four to five pound range every single day. And the fishing was just phenomenal out here. I mean, you could go out and catch buckets of uh, crappies and bluegills. And that's the way it was most of the time since the 1930s when Lake Toma was created by damming the Lemon Ware River. We had a great fishery. And then in the 90s when the dam left and uh, we had that horrendous flood and then they dredged the lake and then they refilled it up. It, it hasn't been the same since. Before the dam went out in, 90, in 1990, this was a great fishing lake. I mean, people came from all over, the, it was a destination. And we're hoping to get that back. The carp kind of just came in and overwhelmed it and, and there wasn't even good carp, you know. They had so stunted their growth because of the volume of it. They tore up all the vegetation, as you see, so there's no way that we could ever get the lake back to where it had been previously unless we destroy the carp. So what's so bad about carp? First of all, they're an exotic, and as most exotics, they are very prolific. They uh, move into areas where they haven't existed before and they have a general tendency to take over. And a carp feeding habit is what really is the problem, is they're, they're omnivores they, they, and they're bottom feeders. They'll stir up the bottom sediments, filter it through their mouths, and then in the process, they dirty the water. They make it more turbid. When the water becomes turbid, the sunlight can't penetrate. Sunlight, uh, no sunlight, no weeds, no weeds, no game fish. In addition to the carp, there was a runoff problem that fueled algae blooms that carpeted the lake in the summer. These small reservoirs have a number of issues related to them and it's very difficult to have a small reservoir that's a, what we would call a successful fishery for a long period of time. The watershed has a, plays a huge role in the, in the health of the lake. In this particular watershed, it was made up almost entirely of agriculture. And when you have agricultural land use in the watershed, you get a lot of fertilizer runoff. Um, that isn't all bad except for when you compound that problem with uh, a high carb density. This lake used to be uh, heavily vegetated with native uh, plant fauna. The water was clear and it was healthy. Joe McDaniel and other members of the lake committee rallied public support to solve the problem. The Monroe County Land Conservation Department worked with farmers to reduce the manure and fertilizer running into the lake. DNR lined up the funding and lifted fishing regulations so people could catch and keep any game fish left. Now it was time to take on the carp. This time we've gone through a much more strenuous effort to take care of the, the carp population. Uh, the last time we did nothing in the tributary streams coming in. This time we have drip stations set up on any water, uh, water body or any water, flowing water coming into the system. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, treat that as well. Plus we're going to do a much better treatment on the lake. Drip stations are 55 gallon barrels filled with a mixture of rotenone and water. They were strategically placed in the tributaries. The mix dripped out of the rubber tubes in a measured dose to keep a constant level of rotenone in the water. So how exactly does that work? Well, rotenone is a, a naturally occurring product. It comes from uh, South America from the Darris plant. It's uh, uh, been used for hundreds of years down there by the natives. Uh, it biodegrades rather rapidly. Anything that breathes with gills will be affected, but it isn't going to kill amphibians and things like that. So that was our plan for the ground. But we also came at the carp from the air. So first, the pilot was given his orders. Where might that be? Can we see it um, from here? Yes. It's this side of that. It's a dredge channel. We'd like to have that hit right away. Well, the helicopter is just going to make it easier for an application. Normally, we would do this with boats, air boats, and this way that we can get a more consistent application because it's all based on spray rates and widths, and then so we can get a very consistent, uh, a very quick uh, application to this lake. The whole thing was done with military precision. We monitored the rote known application carefully and stopped it at the dam. But how do you do that? We put fathead minnows in cages and put them into the water and watched what happened. They will have uh, a number of test cages 
on the infeeding streams, the Lemonware River that feeds into the lake, there will be some test cages of live fish up there to, that we'll use to determine how effective the route known has been. They will probably also have several in the lake itself that we can use to judge uh, the progression of the road known through the lake to determine, you know, is it working properly, is it working, is it this far yet, and it's, it's a way of judging our, our effectiveness. There will also be test cages of live fish downstream from here to make sure that we're getting it neutralized and not continuing to kill fish where we don't want to. Uh, things are going very well today. We've had no uh, major uh, problems. We've had uh, the treatment, the helicopter treatment has gone as planned. And, the uh, detoxification is also going very well. So, what are the next steps in this extreme makeover? This project is not just a carp treatment, it's a, an entire biomanipulation project, meaning we're going to not only treat the fish in the lake, but we're going to use the different techniques that we have for habitat restoration along the shoreline. We're going to be redoing some of the islands, basically putting riprap around them, uh, creating some deeper water habitat next to them enhancing the on-land habitat for birds and reptiles and amphibians. Basically create it anew. Then it was time to put out the welcome mat for the new tenants. The department actually has plans to restock the lake. Um, it's possible we can get some fish this fall that are fish health certified, um, disease-free fish. We're going to start off next spring with dry stocking of largemouth bass, northern pike, bluegill, and black crappie. I can't think of any greater thing that could come out of it as far as I'm concerned to have this as a great sport fishing lake. It took a lot of work by a lot of people. There truly was a real good partnership between the agencies, the uh, DNR, the Monroe County Land Conservation Department, uh, the city officials of Toma, the city workers of Toma, the lake committee members, the volunteers. It took six years of work to get it to where you're seeing it today uh, and we're very fortunate here to have a lake and be able to do this type of stuff and to be able to enjoy a lake right in a community a lot of people in the state don't have that.